All right, all right, all right, Matt, the mortgage guy. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the changing temperature of the housing market. I'm going to look at stats from my market. I'm going to talk to you about how the tables may have turned a little bit. Oh, how the turn tables when it comes to buyers and sellers in today's current housing market. Stay tuned. All right, Matt, the mortgage guy, residential mortgage broker, just telling you uh, what I see, how I see it, when I see it, while I see it, right? Uh, boots on the ground view of what's going on in the real estate market as a mortgage broker who works with hundreds of clients, talks to dozens of real estate agents week in and week out. I'm telling you what I see, hear, and feel in not just my market, but markets across the country where I'm talking to buyers. We're licensed in 48 states, so I'm talking to people across the country. Every market behaves a little bit differently, but in general, we see a temperature change across the board. Before I jump into it, a quick reminder, launching this Friday, July 22nd, 2022, Get Better Every Day podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can find podcasts, more on my socials. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok and all those other places where uh, you'll get a sneak peek into what is to come in the Get Better Every Day with Matt Muget podcast. So enough about me. Let's talk about the market. I've got some cool graphics to show. I had a real estate meeting last week where I had a lot of people show up. The great Ryan Lundquist, who is a real estate appraiser and real estate um, you know, data analyst type guy was there giving great information. He told me it was okay to share um, some of the information. So I'm just going to give you kind of a recap of some things that he talked about in his presentation the, the simple way to state it is the market is changing. Whether you like it or not, as a consumer, as a real estate agent, as a mortgage professional, the market is changing, right? We, it's, it's, it's here. The data that we look at that might be February, March, April, getting into contract, April, May, June, closing, isn't necessarily indicative of what's happening today. July of 2022. You might even be watching this video in August or September or later, and the market will be different then than it is now. It's important to look at this stuff, realize it's changing, realize that week in and week out, it's a different market. Um, and, and so let's share his presentation. Again, Ryan Lundquist, Sacramento Appraisal Blog. Um, he gave a great presentation. Um, if you're lucky enough to catch him in person, um, he presents all over the place to real estate agents. If not, go to sacramentoappraisalblog.com and check out some of his stuff there. Going to share some of the slides and kind of go through these um, stuff we talked about um, at this at this meeting last week and my two cents on it. Um, not going to go through the whole thing. Um, you got you got to go see him if you want to see that. But I will um, pick some slides that I want to specifically talk about. The housing market temperature is constantly changing. This is true, no matter what market you're in. Some markets, Phoenix, Arizona, Idaho, might see a 20% decline. Other markets might see a 5% incline over the next 12 months. These things are yet to be determined. Every market is different, but no doubt the market temperature is constantly changing. We'll look at stats in this video where you look at Sacramento-specific stats, um, Placer County and some of the surrounding counties as well, where inventory might have doubled or tripled since last year. Albeit last year's were all-time lows and ridiculously low numbers, we're slowly approaching what is normal for the Sacramento market. And if we get above normal, we're going to definitely flatten out and uh, continue to see more and more uh, price decreases. So um, quick graph on the X factor, which is mortgage rates, something that um, you know I speak about uh, on this channel a lot. Uh, we saw these peak over 6% since they've dipped back down. We're probably in the mid fives for most well-qualified buyers, but this has a direct impact on affordability and demand. Um, I can tell you that even beyond how many mortgage applications are coming in on a week by week basis, even when they do come in, when see, people see how much they qualify for, or what that payment might look like at a price point they want to buy in a neighborhood they want to buy in, they might decide not to buy based on um, the interest rate, the price, ultimately the monthly payment of their mortgage, right? Um, this is an interesting stat just talking about mortgage payments year over year. 
This is a wild graph to look at when you think about it, right? Um, talking about the median asking price and the payment, keep in mind, is a reflection of not just the median price, but also the interest rate. These interest rates have had a humongous impact on affordability and monthly payment. Literally, from this same time in 20 or 21, 20 to 21, rates were relatively similar, right? The only difference was that homes were slightly more expensive. So your average payment went from, let's call this 1550 to 1700 because of the price. Then when you get prices increasing and mortgage rates going from three to, for all intents and purposes, six, then you go from 17 to 2,500. That is a crazy increase. 47.6% year over year. Obviously, demand is crushed, right? And we're seeing that right now. Less and less people are buying. Either they're unable to buy or unwilling to buy. Um, this is housing affordability in Sacramento, California, which um, this takes the percentage of households that can buy a median priced home. And it's only about one in three. Uh, a couple things to take away from this graph. One, less people qualify as housing gets more expensive. Also, more creative stuff comes into play. Somebody buys a duplex and lives in one half and rents the other. People start adding co-borrowers, doing stuff like house hacking where you've got two or three roommates and they're paying rent and you and a co-borrower um, are buying it together. Whatever the case may be, this 34% number might be just like on paper, income versus average payment who's going to qualify, know that more people are going to find ways to qualify because people find ways to buy real estate, um, realizing it's a great investment. So um, again, uh, crazy stat. It's, it's you know, unfortunate, but it's the reality, right? Um, since we'll call this right here, 2019, 45% could afford it to 34% pretty significant increase that 20% of the people that qualified here wouldn't qualify there. Um, if you take 45 to 34 and call it, you know, 20 to 25% decrease. Um, mortgage purchase applications. Again, this is, this is, you know, my wheelhouse being a mortgage broker. Um, we're going to still see plenty of people buying this year, even though um, mortgage applications as a whole have fallen off a cliff because refinance is not making sense for a vast majority of people anymore. Um, mortgage applications still coming in, um, albeit less than the last couple of years, at a pretty healthy average, right around where we were, you know, let's call it 16 through 20, the, this four year period. This is about where we're at in 2022. So, um, mortgage purchase applications, people are still out there applying. Um, for mortgages. Um, this is this is a, a stat on vacation homes. I'll speak to this really quick. If you see something fall off a cliff, it could be that there is some regulation or change in how mortgages were written. This is second home specific, right? Second homes, you could put 10% down. You get almost the same terms as a primary residence, so a lot better than investment property. Over the pandemic, we saw people buying second homes like it was going out of style. It fell off a cliff. And I'll tell you why. Because mortgage lenders got wise to this and didn't want to write, you know, all these second homes for essentially the same price as they're writing primaries. Second homes are now priced about the same as investment property. So um, rates are nowhere near where they were. This is a big reason for this fall off, right, is that rates got much more expensive on that specific product. Uh, this is an interesting one on median home size. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but I know that over the pandemic, people were looking for more space because they're stuck at home, right? And so home size and the home sizes that we're selling were bigger through the pandemic. That's kind of an interesting one to look at, right? Um, FHA sales are up in Sacramento County. No surprise to me as the market softens, more FHA offers are going to be accepted. More FHA buyers are going to be out there knowing that they have a chance of getting accepted. And so this number, um, by the end of the year, I 
would anticipate this to be at least 15% of FHA sales in Sacramento County um, being FHA. Um, as the market softens, don't be surprised if that goes you know, above 15, somewhere between 15 and 20%. Um, median price in Sacramento region, um, those year over year, you know, 17% increases, 11% increases, those are going away. We are flattening out, no doubt about it, in Sacramento and across the county, or I'm sorry, across the country. Region, regional housing market in Sacramento, median price. This is year over year stats from June of 21 to June of 22. I know I'm going through this fast. There's a lot of stuff that I want to look at. I don't want this video to be four hours long. Um, and so I'm just trying to gloss over and, and talk about the stuff that's that's relevant. Number of sales down. This is something that's, that's really relevant, right? 26% um, decrease in the number of sales. Less home sales are happening. Does this mean that homes are going down in price by 26%? No, it's two different things. Number of sales and the, the number which they're selling at are different things. See the median price went from 575 to 610. It went up 6%, right? The average price went up 5.6%. It's just that the number of sales went down and that's the affordability, the drawback on demand because interest rates went up, right? Um, supply, supply tripled from a half a month to one and three quarters months, a 210% um, increase. I don't know if it's in these slides. Hopefully I get to it. But if not, um, we talked about this last Friday. Average in Sacramento isn't six months of supply. Average in Sacramento is closer to two and a half to three months. So we're pretty close to average where we consider it a balanced market, where sellers and buyers have an equal amount of leverage. Right now, it might feel like buyers have a lot more leverage, but I think a lot of that is due to unrealistic sellers, right? Unrealistic sellers starting too high, buyers couldn't negotiate down from there because they're too high to begin with. Once we level out a little bit, sellers come back down to earth and agents can you know, kind of plainly show them the data um, of where things are at. If they price accordingly, it's gonna be fairly balanced albeit we might have two or three more months of increasing supply. And in that case, uh, buyers are going to have a lot more um, uh, power. There's mortgage rates swirling in the background and sellers just mowing their back lawn. Um, I'm trying to find a specific stat. Um, things are taking longer to sell. That's no surprise. This is Sacramento, um, Placer, and El Dorado counties. Um, I think that across the country, you're probably seeing something similar in your market. Um, days on market is shooting up relatively quickly um, by the looks of things. And what this does is this adds to, we talked about this last week as well. We see a, a huge increase, like we saw the 210% increase in supply. Does that mean that everybody's listening? Does that mean that homes are being built at a rapid pace? No. It means that as stuff lists, as it generally does in spring and summer, and the stuff that's currently on the market isn't selling within two or three days, it starts to pile up. So that's exactly what we are seeing is an increase in the months of inventory because stuff isn't selling as fast. New stuff comes to market, adds to the stuff currently on market. And with that, we see an increase in supply um, over time. Um, we'll be interesting to see if some of these stats that are starting to head back towards normal get to normal and pass through that line, right? To become, um, you know, what what a lot of buyers are hoping for is a buyer's market, right? Um, same here where um, the days on market um, is already higher than it was in 2021. Um, the, the green line represents 2017. Um, and, and really, the red line is the average, right? So we're heading towards average. Um, 21 and 20 are, you know, this uptick too on days in market for the, for the blue line can be attributed to COVID um, because people were uncertain during these months. And so there was an increase in days on market. You know, people weren't buying at the same rapid pace, 2021 stuff was flying off the shelves because of low interest rates and a ton of demand due to that. 
as interest rates creep up, um, this is going to slowly return to what the red line is, is average, what we're going to be looking for and waiting to see is does it cross through that and does it get up in here you know 40 days to where it's well above average days on market and into a buyer's market right um another graph to kind of show you a longer view of days on market in sacramento um sure we've already got more days on market than 2021 um but all these other lines, you know, 04 to 2020, where do we compare compared to those? Um, look at up here, right? Where we've had some months where there's a hundred days, average days on market. Oh, I just saw Top Gun this weekend. So I'll maybe end it on this slide because I don't want this to be an hour long video. Um, sellers finally negotiating a bit more with buyers. It's true. I've got buyers out there all day, every day, um, able to get their offers accepted with contingencies in place, sometimes with seller credit, um, you know, sometimes at or below the sales price. Again, this depends on where the sales price is in the first place. So don't go out and think that you can offer below list on every single listing. It's just not the case. Every market is different as well. But um, we are um, <laughs> seeing uh, buyers finally get a little bit uh, of leverage back. So um, I'll wrap up this video, um, more of Ryan's funny memes you can find on sacramentoappraisalblog.com. If you have any questions at all, me and my team are happy to help you get started. If you're a buyer in this market, know that there's going to be a ton of opportunity in 2022. Go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out a form. We're happy to get you pre-approved. That is the true first step. Get yourself pre-approved, see what it looks like. I wanna buy at 400,000. I might put 10% down or maybe 5%. What does it look like with 5% down? What does it look like 10% down? Those are the questions you not only want to ask, but you want to get the answers to and review, figure out if you're ready to buy, if it fits in your budget, and then go out and find a house that matches it. Hope this was helpful. Until next time, we going to see.